Hey everyone, Paul from OPEX Fitness Bristol here and we're back again with another coaches conversation. It's pretty safe to say that gyms won't be open for a while yet, but this doesn't mean that you can't improve your fitness before gyms reopen. In today's conversation, our coaches will look at what training might look like in the future and also their five ways to maintain your fitness until gyms reopen again. So remember, if you like this video, please slap a like on it, click the subscribe button and check out all the links in the description box below. Hey guys, and welcome to another Coaches Conversation. Um, we've had an announcement recently that uh, gyms are going to be closed for at least seven weeks longer. So, you know, we've had a lot of questions kind of come to us of, again, like, how can I stay healthy and fit in the time until the gyms reopen? So we kind of wanted to have a conversation and give you some ideas that actually this, this is still a time where we can have a, a huge amount of opportunity to, to help us in this. So joining me to talk about this today is uh, Milo and uh, Andy. Um, so let me uh, open it up to you guys, kind of. How are you feeling about the, uh, the announcements of uh, gyms not being open for the next few weeks? Milo? Uh, well, I think this year is a little bit disappointed because it had been quite exciting to go back to the gyms. But then I've also realised um, the actual the other challenges and enjoyment in life mm. and what you can do more without having to, to spend the time going to the gym is actually, you know, it's quite enjoyable. I feel like I fit more into my life now and I don't think my fitness or my health has had any repercussions because of it. And I think now we have less excuses than ever for our nutrition to be, you know, our nutrition is good. You know, we, we have the time to exercise. And I think for me, it's only laziness that will cause me not to do that. Mm. Yeah, there's still definitely <clears throat> a lot of time and convenience to be able to do this, isn't there now? Yeah. Um, we do, we have lost a, a little bit of an aspect in the sense that we don't have the physical location, but there's still, we still have all the other resources we need to be able to make this happen, don't we? Andy, what are your thoughts? Um, my, my initial thoughts were, I wasn't surprised. It's something I was kind of expecting and kind of, you know, preparing myself for. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit, like my was, it is a bit disappointing. I, you know, I do enjoy coaching in the gym and I like being in the gym, but, you know, as, you know, we've, we've talked about this a little bit before is, you know, we've got another seven weeks now of opportunity, right? Like, we, you know, like, you know, it's, it's, you know, we, we can hide behind it and, you know, but I, I think that would just be a bit of laziness. And yeah, you know, we have an opportunity to set great habits and to, to get ourselves in a really good place for, you know, when the gyms do open up, that we're in the best kind of place that we can be at to, to go back and, and, and make the most of it when we have gyms available again. So opportunity, opportunity at the end of the day is how I see it, really. I think, you know, having spoken to a lot of other um, trainers and, and gym owners as well, is like what we know is that even when gyms do open, it's, it's still going to be different to how it was before we, we left, essentially, isn't it? <clears throat> so this is a great time. I personally think that, you know, we can be working on those habits that maybe we working, were working on before, but we're definitely going to be wanting, putting in some good habits and things in place now because we need to be carrying that over into the new world, into the gyms. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely going to be some element I think for many people of a hybrid program of still wanting to train at least partially at home as well as in a gym purely because gyms capacities are going to be massively reduced by social distancing mm -hmm. um, so with that in mind guys let's, let's kind of open that up if, if we're going to move into this new world and we're going to get prepared to move into this new world and we're going to utilise the next seven weeks to stay fit and healthy let's start going through some, some things that we know that the basics to kind of keeping that going um, Maya, why don't you start us off? Um, yeah, I think one of the first things that is kind of, has become quite apparent is just keeping that structure and rhythm to our lives. So, you know, before we'd always would be going to work, we'd be coming home at this time, we'd be do, doing gym at this time. Now that we've got a little bit more flexibility, I still think it's important to keep that structure. You know, we have body clocks and our lives disrupt them. And I think, you know, when we don't always feel 100%, um, I think we think that's normal. But feeling 100% is normal, not, not the opposite of that. And I think if we start working with our, with our body, and that means, you know, sleeping and waking at the same time, having meals at similar times, you know, that structure is going to keep us consistent and that structure will keep us healthy. Yeah, 100%. And again, like we've obviously had so many conversations around motivation as well, like beyond the, the biological aspects of what rhythm does to us, like the motivational aspect of it is huge isn't it like just having consistent times to exercise 
eat decent meals, cook food, um, and just have a good, because I think, you know, we've all had conversations with people where work-life balance at the moment has kind of gone out the window because there's, there's, you don't kind of turn up to that second location anymore and do work and then go home and stop work. You're now, your, your living room is your office. So if some people are going till 9 p.m. or be kind of beyond now. Yeah. So yeah, I think rhythms, rhythm for, for me especially is absolutely number one because everything else is kind of built off of the back of that, both from like a health perspective, but also from like a habit perspective. Mm-hmm. So yeah, great point on that, Milo. Andy, uh, give us another tip. What's, what's next? Well, um, just briefly going back and touching on what Milo said and, and what you said with the rhythm, I think, um, you know, why to me, I think why it's important to do that is because you know, we, we tie it into motivation, but we can't always be motivated. But at the end of the day, when, when motivation fades, you know, drive or will fades, or we have a bad day, what's left? The only thing that is left is habit. That's the only thing that remains. And so if you, you get into that rhythm now, it becomes second nature. So it doesn't become something that you needed need necessary to stay motivated for all the time because it's in your second nature and it's your habit that you've built through this time we have now. Um, but moving forward from it, I think, you know, another thing that is really important is, you know, things like simple things, staying hydrated, for example. I mean, now you, you have your workstation and you can, you have a tap presumably within probably 20 feet of where you're working, like drink water, stay hydrated. As I see Milo doing right now, right on cue. Like, it's just so, you know, it sounds like such basic stuff, but staying in a rhythm and staying hydrated, talk about wanting to feel a hundred percent. Like that's going to go an awful long way into you feeling really, really good and a hundred percent. And when you feel good, everything else will fall into place. So yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think that's yeah, I know. Uh, we've all worked with clients who have, um, you know, come to us and we've, we've spoken to them about getting a little bit more hydrated and suddenly two weeks later, once they've been getting in, two liters of water a day, they're suddenly feeling so much better. Yeah. You know, it's one of the simplest habits that we can do, yeah. but it's so effective. And I think there's a lot of people out there that don't realize that they're just a little bit dehydrated all the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, and that, that leads into like, it kind of, you know, we, it's funny, you know, the more we have these discussions, the more I see it all tied together and, and how they're all related, right? So people say, okay, so if you get into a good rhythm, and you make good habits, you know, it becomes part of a routine and it becomes easier to complete your tasks and have a sustained kind of routine throughout the day, right? If hydration isn't a part of it, you know, so many people go through this energy dip at two o'clock, three o'clock, or into the evening when they're wanting to train after work and they're exhausted. But a big reason why they're exhausted is because they're dehydrated. It's not because they haven't eaten or they're just, they have a really strenuous day. So you can see how all this stuff starts to tie in. You know, you stay hydrated properly. It follows into everything else. That energy stays the same. It's easier to then stay in a rhythm. It's easier to build those habits and to train. Um, you know, they all are just together. You know, they just do this. And yeah. for anyone who's just listening, I'm putting my hands together. <laughs> you know, like we, we talk a lot about digestion and chewing your food and like it, the connections often they aren't made with like hydration, like hydration is so important for our, digest- for our digestion. Like when we're talking about, I mean, again, let's think about body composition. So staying lean, keeping a good bit of mu- muscle mass, staying nice and toned, like we need to feel satiated and we need to have consistent energy to make good decisions. Cause if we have an energy crash, like we're all reaching for the sugar. Like I did it yesterday. I, I uh, went and did some work. We were, uh, we were painting the gym. And uh, I ended up like three hours post my intended meal time with unable to get food. Blood sugar was so low and I went straight for the sweet stuff. Yeah. Um, so, we, you know, in all of this, we're just trying to keep consistent blood sugar, like keep digestion well. So like staying well hydrated, not only just keeps you energized, but it just helps you actually absorb and utilize nutrients consistently through the day. I um, think, yeah, sorry, sorry. Sorry to jump in, um, Danny, but I was just on what you're saying. I just, it's just hitting me more and more actually. And like, like I had a conversation last night um, with my father-in-law actually, and he was, the context was different, but, but the overall message was making a decision and doing the right things and the knock on effect that that has way down the line that you don't even necessarily put together. So 
you don't stay hydrated throughout the day, right? You work, you have that energy dip. So that energy dip affects your training. So maybe you don't do your training or your training isn't as quality as it might be because you've been dehydrated, your energy's in the toilet. You then either don't do that session or you half-ass that training session, right? You're feeling more tired after that. You get, you know, if you're, if but the gyms are open, you're coming home from the gym or work, that's one thing. Or if you're just you're working from home now even, that finishes and then you sit down and you think, right, I've got to make dinner now, right? And that's a daunting task because you've got no, you, your energy's in the toilet because you it all started because you were dehydrated. Um, and then funny old thing, you know, you don't, it's a daunting task to make a good meal. So what do you do? You pick up the phone and even in lockdown, we can still order a Chinese and you go, right, I'm just going to order Chinese then because I just can't be asked to cook dinner because my energy's in the toilet all because I, maybe didn't start my day with a glass of water and then keep that habit going throughout the day. And it's like, it's not an, it's not immediately obvious to people, but that has such a knock on effect. You know, it's, it's like such a big deal. And I guess the last thing I'll say, cause I am aware that I'm rambling a little bit is <laughs> that um, I think our challenge sometimes as coaches is, is getting people to understand, you know, they say, okay, how do I stay fit during lockdown? And they are thinking sets and reps and protein intake, right? And, but little do they know that there's these simple wins that they can make that will make a massive difference in their body composition and how they feel and their fitness. They don't, we're trying to get across them, hey, just sleep well, chew your food and drink water and you will be fitter for just doing those things. You don't have to go smash yourself in the gym to get those wins, right? So it's just like, yeah, it's just, you know, that's the thing that, you know, trying to get across to people is like, don't pay lip service to those things. Those things are, they are as important as the sets and reps in the gym, if not more important, because if you don't do those things properly, you might not even get to the gym because, you know, to do your workout. Yeah, I mean, you're right, like, what we always refer to as the basic lifestyle guidelines, like, they're not sexy, they're not interesting, they're, they're not they're not keto, or, you know, the, the latest macro split, or, like, this special training program, but but they are the thing that win long term, mm -hmm. um, and I think something important that you, you basically said in that is that, like, they set, they set us up with the ability to make it way easier to make the right decision. Yeah. Like, and that's, that's it. Like if, if we've had good sleep, good consistent rhythm in the day, good consistent habits in the day, we've chewed our food, we've stayed hydrated. Like it's so much easier to make that meal in the evening. Yeah. Like it's because we've got energy, like we yeah. feel good, we're ready to do it. And, and as we all know that once you've started to make those small initial habits of drinking more water, going to bed at the right time and, and doing these little things, those, those small things are really easy. They snowball into yeah. bigger, more substantial behavior change, which leads to huge success long term totally yeah completely on that so rhythm hydrate chew your food um what else have we got like thinking uh, especially for a lot of people trying to stay lean at this time what are some ways that we can kind of keep satiety up or kind of keep the body burning fat essentially i think a good thing would be about just including protein with every meal i think you know one of the points that dan just touched on there is that you know when we eat protein it's much more satiating and makes us feel longer than, than the other foods that we, we could eat. And I think another thing is actually, you know, can kind of boost our meta metabolism because it actually takes a little bit of energy more to actually digest and assimilate and use protein than some of the other like carbs and fats. Um, and I think, you know, it doesn't have to be complicated. You just gotta think if you, if you can add a portion of protein to each of your meals, you know, that's that, you've won half, half the battle there. And I think it's sort of shown with, you know, some of the people that I've started working with since we've been in lockdown, we've just been working on the basics, like all the other points that we've just been speaking about, and then just including some protein with every meal. And then if you see the results on the other end, over the last sort of two months, you know, every two weeks, they've just been getting consistently just losing the weight, which is, is what, what their goals are. Yeah, I think um, it's, it's kind of along the same lines as the conversation we're having before about the basic lifestyle guidelines, isn't it? It's like, there's so much argument about fat to carbohydrate ratio and so many people are focusing on that. And like the one that ironically is not being discussed because it's not up for debate is that protein needs to be there. Like, and we need to have enough to have the raw materials to keep the body moving, but also to 
sustain activity and keep us satiated. Um, but again, people don't focus on that. They're not looking at their protein intake because there's so much more discussion and arguments being had about fats and carbohydrates. Yeah. Um, so again, it's not the interesting one, but if we have a portion of protein with every meal, like again, we have more consistent energy throughout the day. We're less likely to snack on stuff. Um, and exactly as you said, it increases um, that thing which we call the thermic effect of feeding. It makes us burn more calories by eating. So it's a win-win. Um, no, I think that's a, that's a great point. Andy, like, what are, what are some easy wins that you have to, to help get protein in the day? Do you have any strategies around it? Um, I do. I know you're a man that um, and, eats and, a lot of protein. Yeah, I mean, so I, I do. I mean, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, uh, to take it back here a little bit. For me... Um, I've long since established that habit, right? So for me, it's like, it is, is just an assumption in the habit that I'm going to have some protein at every meal. And I would feel a bit funny if I didn't, that's not to say that, you know, having just a salad is a bad thing. Cause you know, I would never say that. Um, I think it, it depends, you know, people are really different. I, I have a couple clients, for example, who they really find a lot of value, um, having a shake you know, have, having like a super shake that they add in and maybe they'll add in a little bit of protein with it. Um, and it just works for them because maybe they're on, you know, the thought of them eating a really big, heavy meal first thing in the morning is a really difficult thing to face, you know? So they, 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 they have a shake. Um, and I think another one that works really well for me personally, um, we bang on about it sometimes, but is something like meal prep. You know, I do think that you know, I have a tendency. Now, I'm someone who doesn't mind eating the same kind of form of protein a couple meals in a row. So maybe if that's not you, this might not be the best thing. But you know, I'll find that if I'm going to make a chicken breast for lunch, I'll make <clears throat> two or three of them so that I have that in the fridge because it'll last a day, and I know it's there. And it's a cooked chicken breast, and I can just bang it in the microwave with some veg or something like that. Um, and it's just a very simple way because I think I think one of the problems for people is they're not as organized they don't meal prep and so to go and have that serving of protein a lot of the time they've got to cook that protein and it and it becomes a more time consuming thing and it's a, it's a more daunting task to do so i think being organized meal prep is important and don't you know i've had a lot of questions about it specifically lately and you know i don't think that you should rely on shakes by any means. I think proper balanced meals are the best way, but here and there, you know, if that's going to help you, if it's a question of not getting that protein in or having a shake and getting that protein in, I would say have the shake, although don't rely on it and make it with real food, you know, kale, berries, fruit, a little bit of protein, some fats, you know, we have, we've done a, we did a post in the group a while ago. I did a post about constructing a super shake. So you can find that in the group or, you know, if anyone wanted, again, if, you know, if there's interest, I can repost it. So it's right there for people, you know? Um, but yeah, so, so, so meal prep for sure, I think is, and being organized really helps me make sure I get my protein. In. Yeah. I think some of the things, oh, okay. I think some of the things that Addy was saying there is like, you know, 10 years ago, he might've been a person who perhaps, um, or, you know, maybe, maybe before that, who didn't always get protein in. And yeah. over time he's through organization and kind of learning what works for him. You know, initially he probably would have made sure that he had lots of eggs in the house. When he went to the shop, he made sure that he probably had a, a chicken in the fridge so he could just roast it. And then he probably picked it off and had that in some Tupperware. So whenever you go to the fridge and you look for, right, I'm going to base my meal around protein. He looked in the fridge and there was chicken there. Yeah. And it, was, it wasn't a case of where's my protein, it was there. I think, you know, over time, and I think Andy's shown over the last sort of 15 years, that that's now a habit. It's I think you nailed it, right? Cause, and that was the habit. So like right now, for example, you know, we bought a chicken and I roasted it last night for the sole purpose of having it in the fridge for the next day, day and a half. And now it's there. And so I know if I, you know, if I want to have some chicken and some, some veg or some salad or whatever, it's going to be chicken or rice. I mean, boom, it's right there. It's really easy. There's no excuse. I literally can go in with my bare hand, rip a breast off that sucker. I need it if I need to. So, you know, it, it's about those, the strategies that boil it down to strategies that make your life easier and make your goals easier to attain, I, I, I think is maybe what I would say at the end of the day, whatever that means for you. Something we're all saying in this is like, it depends on you, doesn't it? Like yeah. 
it has to be and there's a lot of people out there who will go kind of there's a right or wrong with this you should or you shouldn't have shakes or you know they'll, they'll put across their own belief system in this and, mm-hmm. and that's not fair like it is a hundred percent what's down to you because we haven't mentioned like you know vegetable protein sources do obviously exist um, and yeah. there's there's other ways that you know <clears throat> whether it's for, for me personally you guys saying that you kind of um have certain things that you like to prep like i'm a big one for variety and protein sources but my shopping consists of like me going out and getting like 11 different sources of protein and that's just yeah. the basis of my meals mm-hmm. so like that's something that works for me is um rather than planning a meal i just have loads of ingredients that i yeah. want to have access to and then i'll just throw stuff together mm-hmm. Um, that's what works for me and you know what works for you and, and Milo and and whoever is completely different but it's I think if we know that it's something we want to work on and then we're just actively trying to move that needle a little bit to the mm-hmm. to the right direction like it's just practice and, and being okay with this might not be what I was told but it works better for me and it allows me to get better consistent um, intake of protein in cool great run with it I think too one one thing that you, you did touch on it right there, just moving that needle a little bit, is, is something that we talk about a lot as coaches. Is I've heard Milo talk about this a lot with his clients, and I think it's a great way to approach it. Um, is uh, you know, so if you want to be more conscious around having protein in every meal, great. If that means that for you know, if that means that you have an extra serving of protein just one extra serving of protein like four days out of the week that's a win right like you've gotten better there like the, you know that, that 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 that's that's a that's a a measurable percentage better and in the right direction than you were before and let's not underestimate that so you know to say to somebody yeah i want you to eat more protein that doesn't mean that there has to be the sweeping change where you're eating three extra servings of protein per day, seven days a week, because that, that's a very difficult change to make. So I think it's important to kind of celebrate those wins when you see them. And it's like, yeah, if that means you have eaten this week. If you ate four extra servings of protein over what you did before, that's a win. That's a really good thing. That's something to look back on and go, yeah, I did well that week. That's good. You know, and that's how the habits start to build because soon that, that, that four extra servings for seven days becomes a given. It becomes a habit. It becomes easy. And then you can like make it five or six. And before you know it, you've got protein at every meal, right? And it's so, you know, important to kind of recognize, I think, that, that we talk about have more protein. Yeah, like that just means have a little bit more protein. It doesn't mean a radical 180 degree flip on your diet. So. Yep. I've said, no, I think, you know, we don't say it enough that this has always got to be a slow drip approach. Yeah. I mean, beyond the the difficulty in that behavior change of suddenly going from no protein to all the protein, like your guts are going to know about it. Yeah. Like if, you, yeah. if you've suddenly gone from like 50 grams of protein today, uh, this day to tomorrow being 150 grams, like you're going to know about it. Yeah. And then you're going to come and say protein didn't work for me. But <laughs> yeah. Um, so as the same with anything in the same way that someone who's never run before that suddenly goes and goes, I'm going to run a marathon tomorrow. Like, yeah, it's, it's, you're going to suddenly decide that running is bad for you. Yeah. Um, not only for our own mental state, but for our physical state, like we need to ease into these changes because mm-hmm. like homeostasis isn't, isn't something we say for, for a joke. It's, we are in, you know, whether it's optimal or not, we're in a system that's kind of running checks and balances right now. And we need to kind of edge that into into that change a little bit rather than just change overnight so i think that's a great point cool so we've got um rhythm hydration chewing food uh protein um what about kind of movement what are you guys thinking around um kind of exercise and activity over the next seven weeks i think it's just about you know having that base of just walking every day i think because you know if you can get doing that consistent and then do anything on top of that that's amazing. And I think, you know, although walking doesn't seem like that much exercise, it's more than you think. And it has a lot of like other benefits such as, you know, like whenever, you know, I've been working for a while, I'll just go out for a half an hour walk. You know, it's very stressful leaving. It gets me away from sitting on my sofa walking all day. And I think, you know, at the moment when most of the days are quite sunny, it's quite nice. And I just sort of use that as the base of your fitness. Yeah. I think that's a great point. I think, you know, walking, huge you know big one like if you can get out for 30 minutes to an hour every day um especially as the weather has been very nice lately that's such a huge win and then on top of that 
um, when it comes to movement and exercise, I think, you know, that's the sexy part. That's the people where their minds always go and they think, okay, I, I want to stay fit and maintain my fitness. And that's good, you know, and, I, and that's important. But I think there's a, a couple of things that we need to do is like, you know, accept and understand and adjust perhaps any expectations or what you're thinking when it comes to that exercise, because, you know, uh, most of us are more limited now because we're training from home. Um, and, and I think, you know, having some understanding of what movement means um, and exercise means um, and what it doesn't mean. So it doesn't mean that you have to find a way to annihilate yourself. Moving for 30 minutes a day, walking, and then on top of that, like 30 minutes of just some resistance training or body weight resistance training or anything you can do. Like, you know, if you've built up a certain level of fitness, you know, it doesn't take, it doesn't take too, too much to maintain at least that level of fitness while we're in this state. And then when gyms do open, if you're a power lifter and you want to get back to power lifting, wonderful. But if you can't power lift now, understand that walking and moving an additional 30 minutes a day with some body weight resistance stuff will go a long way in helping maintain your gains or you know where you're at for when we do go back to the gym. Yeah. And again, when we're talking about how all these things are interconnected, like from personal experience, um, especially during the lockdown, um, we need activity for sleep. So like our, our daily activities uh, connected to the production of this thing called adenosine, which is, is something that basically builds this sleep need. If we don't have enough of it, we can't go to sleep. Um, and walking is a great thing that we can do to get that activity up. But, you know, we talk about rhythm and, um, and I was nailing it. Like I was, you know, got up at the same time, had my 90 minutes before bedtime, cool environment, dark, no blue lights, all of this. And then I'd lay in bed for like two and a half hours with my eyes open, just like, yeah. why can't I sleep? And it wasn't until a couple of days later that I was like flicking through the data on my Apple watch going, oh, I've only walked like 3000 steps the last few days. Like I've just been really busy at my desk. And especially for those who are still working and potentially working more during this time, like recognize that activity for the rest of all of this stuff to work we still have to have that kind of minimum of activity in the day. Um, and that, you know, that for me, that's someone who was still exercising per day, but my overall activity had just dropped off a little bit. And then weirdly the next day I walk 8,000 steps and suddenly I'm off to sleep like that. Yeah. So these things are hugely connected. And I think, um, you know, something we haven't mentioned because other than where you are, Andy, in the lovely sun, like it's not so sunny right now, but, um, Getting outside in the sun is also mega, like to get that vitamin, uh, that vitamin D, mm -hmm. not only great for that rhythm of the body, but also great for immune function and just how the body operates. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, yeah, consistent exercise that like we're saying, get outside and walk, but yeah, do, do get some exposure to light because especially yeah. if we're in this kind of ongoing lockdown, like we need to, we need to see the sky sometimes just yeah. <laughs> for, for not only mental, but biological health, I think. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. cool. <clears throat> all right so we've got uh rhythm hydrated chewing food protein um getting outside kind of moving daily getting some vitamin d getting just activity anything else you guys can think of i think um you know one be about hiring a coach i think you know you know if you're finding something tough at work you get help from your colleagues um you know if you're having struggle with looking after your kids then you've got your family to help but you know when it comes to your health we're always sometimes a little bit more reluctant to get help, uh, to get help. Um, and it seems strange because if you, if you are healthy, you can do all of those other things better. So I think, you know, when you're struggling, you know, you can get a coach to help you and take your training off your hands, support you nutritionally. Yeah. And also kind of give that accountability that you may need. I think in some ways it just sort of, it takes off your hands and just simplify things. And, you know, you see a lot of people out there who have been trying to lose weight for 10 years and, you know, if, you know, this might be a way of actually kickstarting it and actually speeding up that process, because realistically, maybe if you don't, it might just be another 10 years of the same. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, as well, I think following on to that, when it, when it comes to, you know, the accountability is huge, you know, motivation and having someone that you can lean on a little bit when you're, when you're struggling is massive. And also, I mean, you know, how many people are out there thinking, okay, 
they were avid gym goers. Now they don't have the gym anymore. Maybe if they're lucky, they've got just, let's just say they've got a 20 kg dumbbell, right? Or, or some bands or, or even nothing. Coaches, a professional coach, we can look at that and go, oh, there's so much we can do here from a fitness standpoint. Whereas most people, because it's not their job, that's not what they do. They look at it and go, gosh, I, I can't really do anything with a 20 kg dumbbell. But we know that there's so much we can do. There's so much variation. There's so much, so much great exercise to be had just from that or just from body weight. And, 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 and you know, we can make those adjustments and manipulate tempo and all these types of things to give a great workout. So, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, this is something I wrote about a little bit you know, recently is, you know, every, every, you know, I worry sometimes that we're getting into uh, the death of the expert and everyone is becoming a generalist and everybody has some little bit of knowledge. And so they think, okay, I, I can do this on my own, but you know, there is professionals in fields for a reason. And this is what we do, right? Like we exist really like we're here for this time, for this time of uncertainty when people aren't really sure what to do. And we can really, you know, coaches, I, I keep saying we, a coach can really help with that. I think so beyond just the motivation and, and the support, and literally just saying, here's what you can do. Here's, here's everything you have on offer just based on what you have in your house, you know, um, where, you know, many folks don't really, won't see that, but we do. So I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of benefit to hiring, to hiring a coach for sure. Yeah. I think, I mean, even, you know, there's a reason that even all of us either have or do currently work with a coach, like yeah. having, having someone else's, um, set of eyes on you or their opinion or like, and, and a good coach is a good problem solver. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, removed from the exercise component because, you know, as we've spoken about a lot recently, like fitness is more than, more than going to the gym. Mm -hmm. It's what happens outside of the gym. It's, it is that rhythm in the day. It is how you're finding strategies to hydrate more effectively. It's, <clears throat> it's all those little bits and pieces that add up to fitness. Um, and that isn't necessarily simple. That doesn't exactly, as you said, that's not something that you can go to tomorrow. Um, and we're going to come against resistance and objections and, and things that get in a way. And sometimes it's nice to have someone who is a health centric problem solver. who can go, cool, let's, let's have a little discussion and, and here's some strategies that, you know, I have in my toolbox and maybe we can collaborate together on, on a way to overcome this and move you in the right direction. Um, beyond, I think even, you know, a lot of people just giving you the, here's, here's the program you're going to follow. It's having someone that's in your corner, um, guiding you out of this stuff, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's the perfect amount of silence. I think to leave that on. <laughs> um, no, I, I think that's, that's a, a great amount to, to help people kind of people move in the right direction with that. Like, um, rhythm with kind of sleep work, even meal times, just having consistency in day is going to be, is going to be mega, um, staying hydrated, chewing your food, you know, keeping digestion and energy consistent through the day. Um, if you're not already starting to try and push protein into it, like more protein or consistent amounts of protein into your meals as you go through the day for better satiety and um, keeping you fuller for longer, um, getting outside and moving, like move more in the day, see the sunshine, um, and if you want to go that, that extra mile and, and kind of tie this stuff together, like, yeah, hire a coach, whether it's us or someone else, like get someone to help you on this. But, you know, we talk about maintenance. I don't see why if you're nailing those things and you weren't before lockdown, you couldn't come out of this seven weeks when the gyms reopened fitter than you were. Fitter than you were. Absolutely. When you Without were in a gym. Doubt. Absolutely. Um, so no, I think that's, I think that's great. Um, thank you guys for, for joining me and going through that. Um, to everyone listening, I, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that kind of gave you some information um, that was useful. If you have any questions, do uh, do send us a message, drop us a comment. Um, if you like, you know what we're saying, please like, share, subscribe. Um, and yeah, any questions you give is always kind of what's guiding us to our next content. So uh, let us know. Brilliant. We'll leave it there. Thanks, guys.